Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us all together tonight for another opportunity to dig into your word and study it. As we do so, send us your spirit to guide and direct our study and bless everything that we discuss here tonight and make us stronger Christians, make us stronger brothers and sisters in you. In your name we pray, amen. All right, so we're on 2 Corinthians 8 verse 10, I believe. Uh, the one I have, uh, Vicar, is chapter 5. <laughs> you're out of date, Kurt. <laughs> I think you're a little bit off. Yeah. That was on the website, okay? <laughs> oh, was it? Okay, I'll have to, I'll have to go double check that. Keep scrolling down. I thought we were nine. Chapter 8, 10 through 24. Yep, yep. Eight, 10. Yeah. Through Last year, we have now left the new um, covenant and the ministry of that new covenant, and we've moved on now to the two great um, stewardship chapters of the Bible. So do we have any uh, leftover questions about anything we talked through last week in chapter 8? Uh, chapter 8, 1 through 9. Any questions there? All right, seeing none, let's uh, move into chapter 10. So for the first section, we'll take a look at uh, chap uh, verses 10 through 15. Can we get a volunteer to read verses 10 through 15 of 2 Corinthians. All right. Um, you want me to go all the way to 15? Yeah, 10 through 15 would be okay. great. More grumble as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. I, you're in first. Are you? I was going to say, I think you might be in first. No, that's okay. That's okay. Chapter 8, it's chapter eight 10 through 15, right? Yep, that is correct. Second. second. Yep, second Corinthians. <laughs> <laughs> I should have been clear from the beginning. <laughs> okay. And in this matter, I give my advice. It is best for you now to complete what a year ago you began, not only to do, but to desire, so that your readiness in desiring it may be matched by your completing it out of what you have. For if the readiness is there, it is acceptable according to what a man has, not according to what he has not. I do not mean that others should be eased in your burden, but, at, but as a matter of equality, your abundance at the present time should supply their want, so that their abundance may supply your want, that there may be equality. As it is written, he who gathered much had nothing over, and he who had gathered little had no lack. All right, thank you. Uh, was everybody online able to hear that or, or not? You were able to hear it? All right, yes. wonderful. Excellent. Hi, Melissa. Hey, sorry, one of the <laughs> No, that's okay. Don't worry all about it. <laughs> All right, so based on what we read there, what were the basic principles the Corinthians were supposed to follow in their giving? Hi, David. Hey. Uh, there were two of them, I believe. Um, What two principles ought the Corinthians and us as well follow in their giving? The desire to do it. Okay, yep, so we've got the desire, the willingness to do it. Good. What else? I suppose it's almost like the flip side of the desire to give. That we should share with one another. Yep, yep, willingly share with one another. Yep. Share with one another. How appropriate right now. What was that, Dar? How appropriate. 
<laughs> right now with yeah. COVID 19, that those who have should share with those who don't, who need yeah. it. Yeah, right. Well, this reminds me of the guy who had a barn uh, and, okay. and he had too much wheat to put in the barn, so he built a bigger barn. Um, instead of mm -hmm. instead of taking the plenty that he had to share it with others, he just hoarded it for himself. And then God says, you fool, the soul will be uh, taken from you, from you this night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, good. Yeah, and uh, I think one thing we can add here too is, uh, you know, give willingly. The, di the desire to give should be there, but it should also be given uh, proportionately too, right? I mean, if we look at, uh, where, what verse is it? Um, 14. Your abundance at the present time. So we should give from our abundance at the, that we have right now, no matter whether we think we have enough for later on right you know give mm -hmm. give what we have now share it right and in turn it says and in turn their plenty will supply what you need when you yes mm -hmm. yeah well uh, let's let's actually talk about what that means a little bit dar that, that was a good segue to our next question there um okay. so the plenty uh, the Gentile Christians supplied to the Jewish Christians in Jerusalem was, of course, money. So the Corinthians were giving money to help the poor and needy in Jerusalem. What was the plenty that the Jewish Christians in Jerusalem were providing to the Gentile Christians in Corinth? What was that plenty? And uh, if we need to, let's take a look at that Romans 15, 26, and 27 passage. That'll, that'll help us answer, because I don't think it'll be, the answer won't be abundantly clear to us from the, uh, from the Corinthians section here. Romans 15, 26 and 27. So, uh, who would like to read Romans 15, 26 and 27 for us? I am in the wrong book. All right, go for it. Uh, for Macedonia and Achaia have been pleased to have, uh, to make a contribution for the poor among the saints of Jer in Jerusalem. Yes, they were pleased to do so, and they are indebted to them. For if the Gentiles have shared in their spiritual things, they are indebted to minister to them also in material things. All right, so based on what we read there in Romans, what was the plenty that the Jewish Christians in Jerusalem were supplying to Gentile Christians? What's the plenty there? The gospel. Yeah, and uh, could you explain what you mean by that? Well, they were where it came from, and they were sharing that with them. And the you know and that Jesus lived and died and you know saved their sins and they were going to heaven. So you know it's what they gave them in return. So yeah, yeah, good thought. Um, Jesus Christ was a Jew. Um, the Christian religion, the Christian faith, originated in Jerusalem. So the Corinthians were going to supply money, um, monetary gifts to help these Christians out, but the Jewish Christians really in a way you could say provided the most important thing they provided the the one answer to all those problems that the corinthians had that came through jesus the they jewish could have been man selfish and not shared the news at all right yeah but we didn't see that uh, spirit of timidity with the apostles did we yeah no they went out and shared with everybody good any other questions there to that point Not seeing any. Let's move on. Can we get a volunteer now to read verses 16 through 24? That next section there, 16 through 24. Go ahead, Melissa. Um, I thank God for putting into the heart of Titus the same concern I have for you, 
For Titus, not only look on their appeal, but he is coming to you with much enthusiasm and on his own initiative. And we are sending him, sending along with him the brother who is praised by all the churches for his service to the gospel. What is more, he was chosen by the churches to accompany us as we care as we carry the offering which we administer in order to the Lord himself and to show our eagerness to help. We want to avoid any criticism the way the minister of this liberal gift, for we are taking pains to do what is right, not only in the eyes of the Lord, but also in the eyes of men. In addition, we are sending with them our brother who has often proved to us in many ways that he is zealous and now even more so because of his great confidence in you. And as for Titus, he is my partner and fellow worker among you as for our brothers, they are representative of the church in honor to Christ. Therefore, show these men the proof of your love and the reason for our pride in you so that the churches can see it. All right, thank you. So at the beginning of that section, Paul is letting the Corinthians know that he was going to be sending Titus to encourage and gather that offering. Why was Titus a good choice to send to Corinth to, to help get them organized? to get the Corinthians organized. What do we know yeah, about Titus? They already have a history with them. They already knew him and appreciated him. Yep. So uh, the Corinthians already knew Titus exactly. And, and we had mentioned a couple weeks ago in some of the chapters that we had looked at that uh, Titus was very excited to be there. He was very excited to go visit and help out. And that in turn um, had an uh, effect on the Corinthians as well. They're, they were excited by his eagerness and, and excitement. Good. Why does Paul urge the Corinthians to show their love to Titus and those two other brothers that were going to accompany him as they journeyed to Corinth? What reasons do we see there? Well, look at verse 21. Okay. <clears throat> For we are taking pains to do what is right, not only in the eyes of the Lord, but in also the eyes of men. Okay. So what, what's the thought there? They're trying to do what is right. They're, they're, they're trying to take care of people. In, in the in the sight of, of of pain, uh, they're trying to take what is plenty and and giving it to those who don't don't have anything. Yeah, and they want to make sure that uh, they're blameless in in what they do here, right? Um, that that's why Paul is sending these trusted companions along because he doesn't want anybody to think, oh, Paul is just sending his cronies to collect the money and, and who knows what's going to happen to that money once Paul gets into it. That Paul's, uh, yeah, like you said, he's going to great lengths to make sure that that doesn't happen, that that, that kind of bad impression isn't given off. And so the brothers were representatives of the church and honored Christ so that they would trust him. Yeah, I mean, based on that, I, I think, what was that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so evidently the people in – Corinth and Macedonia would have known who these brothers were. And, and there, there's a number of different names thrown out there. Some people would say Barnabas or Luke. Um, actually, if we go to Acts 20, verse 4, there's a mention of a few people leaving with Paul, leaving Macedonia. So it could be some of those names as well. But whatever the case is, yeah, these were, these were individuals that were well-known and, and trusted, had a good reputation in the church. Yep. Why else does Paul urge the Corinthians to show their love to Titus and these two other men? Because he was his partner and co-worker. Yep. And uh, Titus loved them as much as Paul did. Yeah, and it's always a good thing when that love is returned, right? <laughs> There's no reason to have uh, butting heads here. There's no reason for leaders and, and congregants to be going at it. Good, good. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a look at verse, uh, what is it, 23. He is my partner and fellow mm -hmm. worker among you. Yeah, right, exactly. He's a worker among you. He's working with you. He's working for you. He's not working against you. Yeah, treat him, treat him as such, right. And then also, I mean, uh, we'll see here in a bit, but Paul has 
Paul had been boasting about these Christians, right? So he didn't want Titus to show up and be like, hey, what, what happened? Well, all this good stuff that I heard about, it's not here. Where is it? So we got that too. So do we have any questions about those verses? All right. I have a question, but it's not on our study guide here. So take a look at verses. Uh, take a look at verse 13 again. Paul says, our desire is not that others might be relieved while you are hard pressed, but that there might be equality. What is Paul talking about there in verse 13? What point is he trying to make? He's not trying to take advantage of their wealth, in other words, or, or lack. He, he just wants them to do what they can with what they have, as opposed to, and he's not judging them based on others or whatever. It's just what you have, you should. And again, I think it's, it has a lot to do with the early church, which was a lot of sharing. I mean, mm -hmm. it was supposed to, in, in the early going, everyone wanted to be part of like a community. Community, yep. So that has a lot to do with it. So if you have something that others need, but not, you know, it's not to take advantage of you. It's to everyone participates with what yeah. they have or what, what they yeah. yeah, exactly. So uh, in case you didn't hear that online, basically what Vic said was uh, Paul wasn't trying to like take advantage of the Corinthians generosity here. Um, since something you said was give what you can or, or give as, as you have been able to. Yeah, so so that was good. Paul, uh, Paul didn't say um, give what you don't have. Give more than you can give. <laughs> He's not saying, uh, he's, been, he's saying be smart, basically. We don't want this to turn around on you guys. And now all of a sudden, those, those uh, Christians in Jerusalem, now they, we have to gather money from them so that they can now help you out. So basically, he's saying here, be smart. Um, you know what you can give. You know what you can, I don't want to say get away with giving. Um, you know what you can give and still provide for yourself and for your family. Good, good. Uh, let's take a look at question number five there. Uh, Peace Church, this is a made-up church, I'm assuming. Peace Church doesn't worry too much about its offering. Joe, the treasurer, the congregation, does not have a financial secretary, usually puts the offering into a bag after church, counts it at home, and then deposits it. Joe is as honest a person can be, so the church does not worry worry about their system this church's system for taking care of offerings and collections what are we thinking i don't think it provides choice i think it's for um you know joe that's a lot of responsibility to put on him okay to totally have to do a, account for all of that and without backup I mean, I know he, they're saying he's honest and everything, but it is a big responsibility when it's you by yourself. Yeah, and money is not something that people usually take very lightly, is it? No. And especially right. not issues with money. And you can be as honest as you are, but it doesn't matter. There's always someone who's going to question mm -hmm. your honesty. Right, and uh, especially when you... You don't want to assume that people in your church are going to have bad motives or anything, but when you got three, four, five hundred of them gathered together, yeah, right. It, you could very well run into someone like that who is going to go after people, maybe. Yeah. You see, that's what he was saying in, in chapter eight that Titus took the two mm -hmm. brothers with him. You know, it wasn't that they didn't trust Titus, but it was for the good of everyone. Yeah. Yeah, making sure that there's multiple sets of eyes on that money at all times. Yeah, good. Any other comments we have about their practice this year? Yeah, it's it's not just because the guy is uh, is uh, spiritually confirmed and is honest, but for the good of the congregation, they need to be uh, satisfied that there are good checks and balances to make sure mm -hmm. that the money is taken care of. Yeah. And, uh, you know, adding on to that, too, I mean, uh, 
Joe's not going to be there forever. Eventually, someone else is going to have to fill in that position, and uh, there might not be anybody else quite as honorable and honest as Joe. Good, good. Do we have any other thoughts to that point? And the fact that Joe has to travel from church to his home by himself. Yeah. I mean, surely he as a family there, but that is still scary too. You yeah. Know, the, anytime you take money from an organization or a congregation away from the church area, then you are so, so responsible for that. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, with uh, Joe's very, what did it say there? He's very uh, honest. He's as honest as can be. Well, money can make people do some some weird things sometimes, doesn't it? I mean, every, every now and then you'll hear in the news a, a pastor gets in trouble because he was snagging money out of the offering plates and all that. And I mean, you know, uh, generally pastors are counted as some of the most trustworthy, honorable people out there. But even, you know, Satan's good at what he does. He can, he can take anybody astray. Yeah, good. So question number six there. Some Christians feel the church should not ask people to contribute to special needs. So as the case we saw here in, in 2 Corinthians, there, a situation arose in Jerusalem and they wanted to gather money. There are some people who feel that we shouldn't do that as a church. Uh, they feel that Christians are motivated by love to give, not because something comes up and it gets thrust on them all of a sudden. Uh, others think it's okay since many do not give unless they are giving to a specific project. Uh, what do you think? How do we feel about uh, just striking up uh, donations or, or collections like this for people who are needing it? What do we think? Well, uh, again, I'm not sure that you know, that's what they were saying in chapter eight. You give what you can, but mm -hmm. where else not to bring up special needs when you bring it up in your congregation, in your church? Yeah. I mean, how would you know about it if it wasn't brought up? And yeah. If, and you don't have to give, but if it lays up in your heart to give, then you give. Mm -hmm. Good, good so thoughts. I feel, I feel like, yes, it, it should be brought up. But that's what I mean. That's fundamental to Jesus' teachings, isn't it? If someone's in need, you're... Okay. Yeah. I think the, the thought that some people might struggle with here, though, is if, if all of a sudden pastor gets up there some Sunday and he says, uh, there was a hurricane or a tornado or something, we want to give money or we want to collect money for those individuals. And, and now all of a sudden people are feeling compelled to give. I think that is the concern here. And now people won't be giving out of the sense of, um, wow, I get to give a gift to God. This is what I do every Sunday. Now it's, oh, I've been asked to do it. I think, I think some people might be struggling with the compulsion here or, or the, the idea that you need to give or something like that. So how, how are we going to respond to that, though, to that thought? Give from your heart. Because I like what we said. So I like what we've said so far. We've, we're, we've been good. So no, I, yeah, no, Vicar, it's not that. I mean, when somebody asks you to do that, you give from your heart. You don't give because you have to. You give because you want to. Yeah, just uh, I like what you said there, Kurt. Just because a new situation arises doesn't mean that uh, I'm not giving because I don't want to. Yeah, good point. It's just one of many opportunities to, to help out, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, you, you look at uh, the, the people in, in uh, Louisiana who just went through a, a tropical storm mm -hmm. and, and uh, damage. I mean, you, you don't give to those people because you have to. You give to those people because you want to. You want to help them recover. Mm-hmm. It would be a good idea to get to know what you're giving to to have the sure, knowledge. Sure, sure. Have the knowledge. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you, know, that, you know, if if you bring up something, give a special need, you know what that you have that knowledge of. This is what it's for. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't have to see. There's there's not really a problem with it. <clears throat> One yeah. thing that you would have a problem with is, I, I guess if. If we bring up a special need all the time and then they're not getting the money anyway, you know, 
That'd be the problem. Yeah, yep, yep. Yeah, so I, I don't think there's anything uh, compulsory about bringing up special needs. And, and I guess if a person truly did in their heart believe that uh, they were being forced to give when that announcement came, I, I guess they wouldn't have to give in that instance. And I, I suppose that wouldn't be the end of the world, right? You, you can't sin against your own conscience. So, so if an outsider asks you, well, why are you giving money? What, what, is, what is this for? And you can have knowledgeable answer you know sure yeah you definitely want to be yep and doesn't doesn't it uh tune down to this it depends on how it's presented do so what do you mean by that are you giving because i need you to give because you have to or are you giving because these people need it and just give it from your hearts yeah, so the way it's presented could make a difference there too, couldn't it? Yeah. Uh, hey, we've had a situation down in so-and-so state. We need to have X amount of money collected by next week. Get those checkbooks out. That probably would be uh, making people feel compelled to give, wouldn't it? Yeah. But I, you could come at it the same way and say, hey, here's a wonderful opportunity to serve our Savior, to serve, to serve his people who, need, who, uh, who have need right now. Yeah. Yep, the way it's brought up certainly could make a difference there. That's a good point. All right. So do we have any questions about anything in 2 Corinthians 8? I just joined, but that won't stop me from commenting. <laughs> sure, go ahead. <laughs> I mean, I think part of the challenge here is that we're talking about having to in like multiple dimensions, and there is a part in which we must, like where we do have to. Mm -hmm but we're not used to thinking about having to do things that are imposed from inside of us or out of love rather than uh, due to like negative factors like punishment, right? Like, you know, do you have to love your wife, you know, like, or what, you know, like what happens? The love police don't show up, you know, but you have to because it's like, it's keeping to a promise and because it's um it's like out of that which is already in you out of out of and in this case it's like out of what god has put in your heart so anyway i just think like there's a very uh modern temptation to think of of have to as in like you know from my cold dead hands like you can't make me do this um but there's another type of compulsion that comes from inside our heart yeah, it's a kind of an old man, new man battle struggle kind of thing, isn't it? The, uh, the new man inside me says, yes, of course, give me every opportunity I can to help. But the old man, I'm going to take every opportunity to find all those excuses and all those reasons why I shouldn't, why I shouldn't involve myself here. Yeah, yep. good point. Do what you need. That's okay. Um, all right, let's move on to chapter nine. I think, uh, what do I have, Mark? Okay, so yep, go ahead, Roberta. I'll, I'll, I'll just look down at it. Okay. Generosity and courage is a topic of contemporary order for sin. So <laughs> that just says it all, I think. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, let's take a look at verses one through five right off the bat of chapter nine. Can we get a volunteer for those five verses? And I'll read. All right, Roberta, they're all yours. Um, there is no need for me to write to you about this service to the Lord's people, for I know your eagerness to help. And I've been boasting about it to the, is it the Macedonians? Macedonians, the Macedonians yep. Telling them that since last year, last year you and our, our Achaia. Achaia was ready to give. And your enthusiasm has stirred most of them to action. But I'm sending the brothers in order that our boasting about you in this matter should not prove hollow, but that you may be ready as I said you would be. For if any Macedonians come with me and find you unprepared, we, not to say anything about you, would be ashamed of having been so confident. So I thought it necessary to urge the brothers to visit you in advance and finish the arrangement for the generous gift 
you have promised. Then it will be ready as a generous gift, not as one grudgingly given. All right. Thank you. So Paul had boasted to the Macedonians about the Corinthians' eagerness to contribute. But now was the time for the final arrangements before the offering was delivered to the people in Jerusalem. What was Paul afraid might happen as these arrangements are being made? He was afraid of what he had. Yep, so he had done all this boasting, told the Macedonians about how wonderful Corinth, the Corinthians were and how eager they were to give. And then they show up and, oh boy, it looks like they weren't all that eager after all. Nothing's ready to go. Yep. Good, good. <clears throat> and that's, that's exactly why Paul sent Titus and those brothers, right? To make sure that, that everything would be set to go. Good, good. Let's finish out uh, chapter 9, verses 6. Well, let's break this one up a little bit. Uh, we'll go 6 through 9, 10 through 11, and 12 through 15. So uh, can I get a volunteer for 6 to 9? Sure. All right, so Greta, uh, how about 10 through 11? I'll take care of it. All right, and then Deborah, did you want uh, 12 through 15? All right, go for it. The point is this. He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must do as he has made up his mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that you may always have enough of everything, and may provide in abundance for it, as it is written. <laughs> As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. All right. Thank you. Now he who supplies seed to the sower, and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing, and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in everything for all liberality which through us is producing thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of God's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, men will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. All right. Thanks, everybody. So take a look again at verse 6. Um, what promise does God attach to generous giving there? Yep, so you're generous. God is going to be generous to you as well. We couldn't hear, we couldn't hear that. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sure. So, uh, yeah, uh, so what she said was uh, it's going to come back to you, basically. If you, you're, you're going to reap the rewards of your generosity sometime later. This Question? reminds me of... This reminds me, uh, Vicar, of evangelism and, mm -hmm. sowing, and sowing the seeds. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you talk about uh, evangelism and wanting to, uh, wanting to bring more people into the sheep pen. Well, that's not going to happen if you don't get out there and, and talk with people. Yeah, that's a good comparison. And it's the same way here. Um, if you... Uh, if you give, you're, you're going to be on the receiving end eventually. God, God's going to bless you in some way. Yep, good. <clears throat> so how should the Corinthians determine how much that they should give? I think that's the next verse there, verse 7.
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, kind of going back to that uh, idea of compulsion there, that's not what we're going for, right? Um, give what you have decided in your heart you can give. You're not, no one's forcing anybody. Well, maybe some churches are forcing, but hopefully you won't be forced here at our church in the, into giving more or less. I don't think we'll run into that. But well, let's go spend it. You, you, know, you set aside each week what you are going to give. Yeah, uh, something that Paul had mentioned in 1 Corinthians, right? At the uh, end of the epistle there. You should set aside at some money in keeping with your income. Good. Good. So list the benefits to God's church that would accompany the Corinthians gift here. What benefits would there be for God's church? And, and not necessarily just for the congregation in Corinth, but the, the larger Christian church in general. What blessings would there be? Uh, if, you, if you're not sure, verses 12, 13, and 14 provide us with some answers. Yep, so you're taking care of other people. Good. Well, I, you know, I would go back to verse 10. Okay. So the thought there being... Well, he who supplies feed to the sower, that's God, mm -hmm. will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness, which means, to me, you will increase the people who come to faith. Yep, so that, that is definitely one of those ways, right? Our, our gifts are used um, for outreach purposes. Yeah, good, good. Any other blessings for the church? So we uh, talked about, how about verse 12 there? Um, and it's also going to be an overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. So these people who are receiving the gift are going to overflow in praise and thanksgiving to God. So it, it's giving them an opportunity to, to be joyous, to, to praise God. So that, that's great. Any other, any other uh, blessings here? in verses 13 or 14 that we haven't touched on yet. It also points out that um, okay. yep. it, would, it would praise God because you are obedient to God in giving to others and in sharing your wealth. Yep. So it's a, it's a great opportunity for us to serve and, and glorify God in that way. Good. And let's not think that, that it's just money that we should. We need to think about the faith that we share. That comes back to us also. Mm -hmm. In what ways? It comes back to us that uh, people will come back to see Christ as their Savior. And that's another sinner who is going to heaven. Yep. Angels rejoicing, right? Talking uh, Luke 15 there. Over one sinner who yep. repents. Yep. Much rejoicing in heaven. And that's a cool thought, too, isn't it? <laughs> Something satisfying about sharing Jesus with someone who doesn't know him or, or who forgot about him. Yeah, great. Do we have any other thoughts we want to add to this here? Or questions, comments? All right, uh, let's move on to question number five there. Joyce wants to give. I don't know what Joyce this is. It's just Joyce. She wants to give, though. If she gives, she thinks she will have an easier time in life because God will increase her wealth. What do you make of Joyce's attitude here? God pleasing, yay or nay? Definitely not. Definitely not. Why not? No. Nope. No. She should be Hear lots of no's. <laughs> she should be giving out of love and out of her heart and not because she thinks she's going to get something back in return. We do. We do anyway. I mean, you know, when we give to God, I mean, you know, we get his blessings and, you know, but we should be giving from the heart, not because we think we're going to get something. Yeah, I think uh, Joyce's Bible, when she opens up to 2 Corinthians 9, it must go straight from verse 6 to 8. There must not be a verse 7 in there. <laughs> 
Yep. Uh, not reluctantly or under compulsion. Give because you have the opportunity to do it, not because uh, not because you think oh, I'm going to get some reward here in return. Right. Yeah. Wouldn't good that, thoughts. Wouldn't that be considered as kind of like being selfish that you're only expecting and you're only going to help as long as you get something in return? It's kind of a selfish thing at the same time. Yeah. You're, you're yep. not thinking of others, like you're only thinking of yourself. Yeah. You're not giving, uh, and, and if that's your attitude, you're not giving because you have an opportunity to serve uh, God and your neighbor. You're giving because you think somehow you're going to get served in return. And yeah, that, that would be a very selfish attitude to have there. Yeah. Uh, yeah Vicar, when, when we give, we should have the attitude of the widow who gave her last three mites. Yeah, excellent. Uh, Mark 12, right? Yeah, we got all those people throwing in all their money into the money box at the temple, but there's one widow who put in all she had, and, and her gift was worth far more in God's eyes than all those wealthy people who were putting in the big box because they were given because that's what you do when you go to the temple. You put money in the box, but... Uh, she gave because she wanted to serve the people at the temple. Yeah. It's not the size of the offering that counts. It's the, it's the size of the heart, I guess you could say, right? Or, or rather, what's in the heart. Yep. Oh, that's well said. Point. Good point. So if you take a look at uh, verse 15 there, Paul closes out this section. He says, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. So... Paul is basically saying there that the ability to give a gift, that in and of itself is a gift. Why is that such a great gift? Question number six there. The ability to give. Why is that a great gift? Makes you feel good. And why does it make you feel good? Because then you feel like you're helping someone or something in a cause, and it's just, it's a good feeling. Yeah, so there, there's definitely satisfaction there in, in helping out a brother or sister in need. Good thought. Why else is it such a great gift? Well, it's not always um, easy for people <laughs> to, to give, you know? <laughs> it's not always easy for people to be selfless. Um, it's not a, you know, not a natural thing seemingly um, all the time. Uh, so, you're, yeah. you're kind of breaking up there, Paulina. I'm not really sure what you said. <laughs> um, you can type it into the chat real quick, or, or we can pass. That's okay, too. <laughs> um, Roberta, what were you saying? I said uh, it makes you, when you're letting, uh, it's... Uh, when you're ensuring the love of God towards you, you're letting the righteousness that Jesus gave us, you know, to work in your life. And part of giving is what we should be doing because Jesus has given us so much. Yeah, so uh, letting the light shine, right. uh, sharing that love with the world. Good, good. I also see one of the greatest gifts that we have as humans is free will and we when we have that choice of free will and we use it to give to us it's like saying well this is what you've given us as as a matter because it's come, it comes from us not from you know from inside us not through him he mm -hmm. gives his gift of being able to have free will and if we use that free will for the benefit of others it, it glorifies him Yep. So using all those gifts in a in a way that doesn't glorify the self, but but gives glory to God. And, and one way that we do that is by using those things that He's given us, which is a kind of a interesting thought. You know, <laughs> this is all yours, God. You give it to me to use it for you. But interesting thought. But it, it isn't. It is neat, though. It is neat. Yeah. Good thought. Um, any other thoughts? Why is giving such a great gift? You know, giving is not just the money. Time is so important to us. And when we take out this time to come to Bible study or 
church, it's it's a big thing. Mm -hmm. God's pleased because maybe we've got a hundred things going on in our life, and believe me, I know that about that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's easy to say, I'm just, I, I'm not going to go. You know, I'll, I'll study on my own. Mm -hmm. But this is a great blessing. It really is. Yeah. Good. Do we have any other comments or to this point or, or questions? Well, the thing that's nice is not, go ahead. No, go ahead. The thing that, that's, that strikes me uh, on these two passages, both 14 and 15, is that God gives me, uh, by his grace, the willingness to do this without without thinking that I have to. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's something that he gives me out of grace to say, you've given me so much, so I'm going to give it back to you. Yeah, so not only does God give us the possessions and the wealth and, or the time or whatever it may be, not only does he give us all that stuff to give, but he also works a, a proper attitude and desire in our hearts, one that says, yes, I do want to use all of these things for you, for your church, for your glory. Yeah, good, good. Any other comments here? Somebody else had something. Okay. Dar, do you got, got a thought? I, I was going to say, I, 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 it wasn't me that said something, but the, okay. thought that, you know, the thought I had is, you know, God gave us the ultimate gift. Mm -hmm. He gave us his son, his only son. And if it hadn't been for him, we'd all be destined to hell. And so that we have that to be thankful for. And we should feel that way when we give. Um, it, it should be out of our heart and out of thanks to him and love to him, you know, to, for everything that he's done for us and everything he does every day and gives us every day. If it wasn't for him, the, the world wouldn't be going around, you know. We wouldn't have food. We wouldn't have, there wouldn't be anything. So we have our lives to thank him for. Yeah. We, we love because he first loved us. Uh, any expressions of love that we might show to our neighbor or, or to him are, are only possible because he showed us that love first. Yeah. Good thought. And we need to remember that we need to try to live our lives as he would and do mm -hmm. as he would. It's hard to do. It's very hard. I have a hard time and I pray for the every day. Please live my life for you that I do the things that you would want me to do. And Satan fights constantly. Mm -hmm. you know, he beats us down constantly. Yeah, he's just around the corner. Yeah, he he's knows what he's corner. doing. That's right for sure. over there, right over the shoulder, <laughs> sitting back there. <laughs> You just sit right there. So you just flip that out. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the evil I do not want to do. This I keep on doing. Exactly. So exactly. you gotta you gotta wake up every morning uh, expecting a battle. And uh, there's not going to be an easy day. Satan's going to come at you a million different ways every single day, and, and there's only yeah. one way to overcome him, and that's uh, yeah, and Christ and the gifts He's given. Us. You you left the other half out. The good I want to do, I do not do. Yep. Yeah. So we we know right and wrong. Are we not all? We guilty? tend to. Are we? Not we tend all to not want to. Yeah, we all are. Yep. We we know right and wrong, but for whatever reason, I shouldn't say for whatever reason. We know why, but. Uh, we tend to not do the good and, and to do the bad instead. That's the old man inside of me. And Satan whispering in our ear. The little, mm. the little oh. angel and the devil on either shoulder that I was always taught when I was little, you know, growing up, you know, and Satan's always whispering in your ear and he's always wanting you to do the yep. bad. Yeah, good, good. Well, uh, we don't have a ton of time, so we probably won't move on to chapter 10. 
Um, I've got a question here that I came up with, so it's not on anybody's sheets, but I'll, uh, I'll read through it. So take a look at verse 7 again. Paul says, Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So how is the model for giving that Paul brings up here in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7 different from the model of giving for the Old Testament believers? Well, in the Old Testament believers, you're supposed to give your first 10%, the first fruit. And with this, it's what you can. Not everybody can give the first 10. So he's looking at it as do you know to do what you can compared to being the old way you're supposed to do the first fruit yeah good so uh for us new testament believers there's no prescribed amount or percentage we should give yeah good well let's remember that the the tithe of 10 percent was the minimum that families had to give Plus, they had to give sacrifices of much more. So the estimate uh, that I've heard is that it was about 33%. Yeah, they were, uh, we talk about the tithe a lot. But yeah, like you said, Kurt, they were given a lot more than that. So that, that was just uh, um, first fruits of the harvest that they had to give 10%. of. But like you said, they were bringing animals and grain you know they had to supply food for the levites they had to bring all those different sin and guilt offerings and all that yeah it was it's probably a lot more weighty than uh than that 10 percent. yeah good point so we don't have a prescribed amount like the old testament israelites did could that lead to any problems or, or challenges as we give or as we consider how we might give not having a prescribed amount. Well, I think some of us, you know, some people would, you know, just say, well, whatever's left over at the end of the week or whenever they get paid, you know, I could look at it that way since there's not a prescribed amount. Yeah. But, so it, um, oh, sorry, Dara, go ahead. But, you know, but if we remember to put God first, and to say, you know, I'm going to give this regardless, you know, um, and, and give what I can, but yet still put it on the side in the beginning of the week, not just give God the leftovers. Yeah, so uh, giving could get kind of pushed on to the back burner, become an afterthought. Uh, any yeah. other challenges or issues that this might present? Well. As sinners, it's really easy to put God last mm -hmm. uh, because we are all our sinners and, yeah. and we have to admit that. But it's really easy to say, okay, well, I've got five bucks left you know, from this paycheck this week, so that's what I'm going to give. Yeah. yeah. Oh, boy, I forgot to write out a check, and it's Sunday morning. Now what? Yep. <laughs> Another, so how how can we oh sorry i guess another another way you can look at it is sometimes people may not know how to give or what to give so it is helpful to give them a guidance as to or some guidelines as to how they may give mm -hmm. so not having something means that you know i i can pull it out of a hat, but sometimes people actually need guidance. Sure. And that's a good point. I like yeah. the Bible information class. Pastor spends a good part of one session just addressing what Deborah is saying about how, how we live as Christians. Mm -hmm. So in our last few minutes, how might we address some of these issues? What are some ways that we can overcome our our shortcomings if if we have issues this way, or if this is a particular thing that we struggle with, or how could you help someone who might be struggling with these issues? We'll look at it that way. Are you talking about the percentage? Yeah, just uh, not not being sure how to give, how much to give. Well, you know, we have to be. We are in a practical way too, in that our church 
needs funds to keep going. Mm -hmm. And we can't just say sometimes that we can give as we can give. That's a good guideline, but I think that we need some sort of guideline to put towards God's work through our church. And then, in addition, let our heart lead us on giving also. But I think that there has to be some some bounds or issues that the church knows is coming in. Well, and I, I think that's part of the reason why we have like these right. stewardship series, you know, these right. these four month long series is getting us to consider ways that we can you know, use our money and our time and, and talents and all that for our church. And, and as you were saying that, I, I had a, one of those interesting, well, maybe not that interesting, but uh, we talked a while back about how, what are some blessings that come from giving? And you mentioned like a church needs money to run. I mean, you give and we've got this wonderful place to worship. We've got, we've got called workers here who serve us in that way. So that's one of those blessings. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So some of the, some of those ways we could com combat that would be through uh like a stewardship series or something. Yep, good. Any other ways? Well, I think, I think Paul said it best. Uh, set aside, first of all, decide in your heart. Mm -hmm. And then set it aside first. And then give that much. It doesn't matter how much, like the three mites. What matters is that, is that you give, and that you give generously and and proportionately and willingly in thank you. So the, uh, the new man, or sorry, rather the old man might need to be beaten down with the law and the new man might need to be uh, brought back up out of the depths with the gospel. <laughs> the old man needs a baseball bat. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the, the law is, uh, the law can be a pretty hard bat at times, can't it? <laughs> Um, were you going to say something? Yeah, no, I just want to say that even like with the new tools that we have, like the online giving makes it a little easier mm -hmm. as well because it's the same amount unless you change it. So it's good for the church, it's good for you, it's planned in advance. Yeah, so you, you can't forget about it. <laughs> yeah, good, good. planned in your budget. Uh-huh. So yeah. Yeah, good. Good. Um, do we have any other thoughts how we could address potential issues that might arise there, not having a prescribed amount or percentage, or, or have we kind of covered them all? Well, let's remember we can't outgive God. That's right. <laughs> Amen. All right. So, do we have any other questions or comments? Anything we heard that we're uh, Uncertain of why? Why was that said that way, or or anything like that? What um with giving to God um not only you know through um my, uh, for the, with money you, know, you also have you know, by volunteering to um, do things um you know putting in your time or, you know that's that's also a giving you know to to mm -hmm. you know, God as well. Yeah, good thought, Melissa. We've been spending a lot of our evening here talking about financial giving, but I think that's a good closing thought. Uh, money's not the only way that we give. Money's not the only way that we can we can serve our church and our Lord. Good thought. So do we have any other questions or comments? Good Bible study. Yes. All right, wonderful. Well, shall we close? Lord God, thank you for showing us what it means to, to be a steward of, of the gifts that you have given us here this evening. As we go our separate ways, help us to see and consider ways that we can serve you with our, with our time and our treasures and talents and, and all that you have given us. Help us to see that all of these things that, that we have really did come from you and, and that you give them to us so that we may have the opportunity and the privilege to use them for you. Uh, help us put the old man to death when he, when he comes at us to be selfish and, and self-seeking and self-serving. And, and encourage us by your gospel to be good stewards of, of these gifts you have given us. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah.
All right. Thanks, Good night, everybody. Good night. Yep. Good night. Take care, everybody. Here, that's for you. <laughs> what was that? Tech. Oh, I, yeah, I was going to ask why you put that on. Kurt. I think he got out too fast for you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, no, he's all in. He's smiling. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. Yep. Take care, everybody.